Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 10. Now, last episode, we set up our little animal farms out here next to the base. And for the most part, they've been kind of working well. The sheep farm has definitely been doing its job. If we go ahead and take a quick look back here, we have almost 50 wool, which is pretty nice. The cow farm, on the other hand... Eh, not so much. This thing uh, has actually not done much since the end of last episode, mainly because we don't have any wheat to put in this breeder, uh, and also because occasionally the cows fall through the gaps and end up down here as well, which is not really a good thing. And yeah, I think we're probably going to have to go ahead and save up some emeralds and actually invest in that chronotyper. There we go. Come back here. Invest in that chronotyper that we were talking about at the end of last episode if we want to get a fully functioning cow farm that actually works and provides us with beef and leather. But that's not the point of today. Today, the first thing that I want to do is shut these bloody animals up because those things are annoying as heck. If you stand there, all you can hear is just buying and mooing and it is ridiculous. So the first thing that we're going to make is this guy over here, the sound muffler from Extra Utilities, which is really easy to make and does exactly what, it expect, what you'd expect it to do uh, if you have any wood that is which apparently we don't but thankfully we could turn some rubber wood into jungle wood and i think do the exact same thing if we do something like this we'll take two of those and then surround them with wool from our little sheep farm outside and basically it just muffles the sound of everything around it you can do it for pretty much anything machines animals um I don't think there's anything else you can really do it for apart from machines and animals, but machines and animals uh, are definitely a nice little combination to use them on. So let's go ahead and quickly make one of these up. I might even throw one down uh, next to this generator over here because that low rumbling that you can hear is like the generator. I've noticed in the last few videos whilst I've been edi editing them, they've got like a lot of a low rumbling sound going on in the background. And it's all these machines from IC2. So uh, if we were to go ahead and take, uh, I guess, another one of those, throw them in like that, throw some wool around them like so, and then go one, two, and three. We should be going to throw one down, say... No. No. It doesn't work on these machines. I didn't know that was the case. Ah, oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Anyway, we can go ahead and throw these down on the cow's eye side. I know this for a fact. So if we were to go ahead and do something like... This. And I guess... This. You can see that they've got very quiet all of a sudden. And we can think again. It's beautiful. So, what I want to do today, guys, is I want to set up a mob farm. So, we've got ourselves a cow farm and a sheep farm, or almost a cow farm and a sheep farm. And the next thing that I want to set up was a mob farm. A, mo a farm that would spawn in all the different kinds of mobs, skeletons, creepers, spiders, zombies, all those kind of things, and then kill them automatically for us to take all of the loot. Because if you want to progress into some of the mods like Thorncraft, Blood Magic, and a bunch of the other mods that we have installed, we're going to need a lot of things like gunpowder, string, occasionally zombie brains, and stuff like that to do some of the more cool stuff within those mods and having a nice little mob farm would be a good way to get started. So, there are a couple of ways you can get started with mob farms. We could go around and we could grab a bunch of spawners and we could do we could like start with that. I know there's a you'll see on the map over there. I kind of if you can quite see it. Uh, let's see if we can go outside. And that blue line over there, if you look down, it's a dungeon. So I found a little dungeon. That has a zombie spawner on it. But that's not what we're going to do. Because that's a bit of a pain. Moving spawners is expensive. And using spawners is a bit of a pain as well. Because it's really hard to find a skeleton spawner, a creeper spawner, a spider spawner, and a zombie spawner. Just going around and trying to find all of those would take us forever. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to get ourselves some Cursed Earth. If we were to go ahead and type in Cursed Earth, this thing is pretty cool. Now, if you click on it, it says, when this block is in a dark area, it will spawn mobs at a much faster rate and with no regard to players proximity it will also attempt to spread the nearby spread to nearby dirt and grass blocks however when light shines upon the dirt it will see spawning mobs and will very quickly return to regular dirt so basically what this does it'll spawn a ton of mobs on it as long as it's in pitch black and this stuff is actually pretty hard to get you can only get this and there's like a bunch of more information about it here but the only way that you can get this is by activating a divis uh, a division sigil i believe it is i always want to call it a divination sigil but it's not it's a division sigil and by activating that you get a bunch of cursed earth that you can then pick up put down and spread to other dirt and stuff and create a pretty awesome spawner that will spawn any type of mob you could imagine so what we're going to do to begin with is i'm going to start actually by doing something that might sound a bit weird for now but you'll kind of see why i'm doing it in a little bit and that is by 
pulverizing up a butt ton of wool. So let's have a look. Where is all of our wool? Uh, we have 26, 29 wool. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna macerate all of this wool up. Uh, over in here like that i'm gonna macerate it all up and we're gonna come back to about a stack of string which we are definitely gonna be able to put to use and whilst we wait for that i'm gonna head down to this dungeon that i found now between this episode and last i have done a lot of exploration a lot of mining because obviously i knew what i wanted to do this episode and i found both this dungeon and actually a village and please don't shoot me please please thank you <laughs> and actually a village of oh there i said you don't shoot me you're gonna shoot me aren't you yep you are you're a douche get out of here there we go and i actually found a village as well over by the and near where we killed the Enderman last episode for the um, for the Eye of Ender. And it's only a small village. I don't know if you can call it a village. It's two houses next to each other. And it's a bit weird. By the way, this isn't where I found the, uh, the dungeon. I was kind of mining in a different direction. But I made this just for ease of access during the video. And get out of here. This is where the zombie spawner is. Yeah. I don't think we have any torches. But... We can go ahead and take all this stuff. We've got some fire nets, some swords, and some tin. This is the one that has what we need. It has the division sigil and a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to take it all because it probably call, will come in useful at some point. But uh, I think that's actually one of the one of two ways that you can find the division sigil. You can find it in dungeon chests or you get it when you kill the wither. Now, I don't know about you. I didn't really feel like killing the wither this episode. So I just thought finding a dungeon would be an easier way of doing it. Uh, I did find a couple more between uh, that one that didn't contain any. And I did a bit of checking. I did a bit of reading research between this episode and last and i want to see if people who are playing along with me with the same seed will be able to find a divination sigil in a division sigil not a divination sigil in that dungeon as well and it turns out if you were to play along with me with the same seed you will find a dungeon there but it might not contain the same stuff because the, whilst the dungeons aren't randomly generated they spawn in the same place every time what's inside the dungeons is random every time so you might find like an ender pearl in there instead of a division sigil or something like that and just just a heads up there if you want to play along and try and find the same stuff but anyway, let's go ahead and grab a bunch of this wool. And the reason why I've gone ahead and got myself a bunch of pulverized wool is because the way this works is uh, if we were to go ahead and sneak right click on this, uh, shift right click somewhere. Let's have a look. What does it say? It says inactive. You must perform the activation ritual. Sneak right click on an enchanting table for more details. Okay. So for an enchanting table, we are actually going to need a little bit of obsidian. Actually, we're going to need four obsidian. I think we have one, and I do have uh, I do have uh, a reason for having this one. So we're going to have to get four more in order to make ourselves a enchanting table. I think we do have the diamonds, but the reason why I've made uh, a bunch of string is to make books. Because if we go ahead and have a look at the recipe for books, there are two recipes. There is the normal vanilla Minecraft recipe, which is three paper and a leather, and then there is the Tinker's construct recipe, which is three paper, two blank patterns, and a string. So this string is going to allow us to make books. And if you remember that village I was talking about. About earlier in the episode that village actually has a villager that will trade 12 books for an emerald and we are going to need an emerald later on this episode and i'm kind of also hoping that we can get four emeralds out of him so we can use three to make the chronotype and now that's a bit of a stretch we might not be able to get that many out of him but uh, if we can at least get one we should be able to get ourselves a bunch of cursed earth which will be pretty freaking awesome so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a machine real quick before we go get some obsidian. And that machine is the pulverizer. Now, uh, for those who know what the pulverizer does, you'll probably be thinking, Isaac, what the heck are you doing? Why are you making a pulverizer? You have a sag mill and they do pretty much the same thing. And for the most part, yes, they do. The pulverizer and the sag mill both turn ores into dust or things like uh, cobblestone into sand and stuff like that. But the reason that I am making a pulverizer uh, instead of using the sag mill that we already have, and I'm really hoping that we have some copper. We do. Nice. I'll take that. Make some copper gears. Is to to make paper because we don't have a ton of sugar cane we have a little bit but nowhere near enough to make 12 bucks and with this guy which we almost have and if we had a little bit more iron we would have let's have a look we'll throw you into the corners like so that gets us that and then we just need the coil and boom pulverizer nice and the reason that i'm making a pulverizer Oh, I thought I'd lost it then. I got a little bit scared. The reason that I'm making a pulverizer, and let's just do a quick thing here, is because the pulverizer can turn wood into wood chips that can then that can then be used to make paper. So let's go ahead and throw you down like there. Let's go get some paper. Uh, let's go get some uh, oak wood out of our barrel after we quickly get ourselves a bit of shut eye. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. And then let's go grab some wood. And basically what the pulverizer will do is if you put wood into the pulverizer, you get wood chips. And if you combine four wood chips together with some water, you get yourself some uh, 
No, if you put four wood, yeah, four wood chips together with some water, you get yourself some paper, which is actually really useful because it means we don't have to go ahead and farm a butt ton of sugarcane in order to get ourselves those 12 bucks, or maybe even potentially 24, 36, 48 bucks if we were to get a bunch of emeralds from this guy. So let's go ahead and close that up and let's start to pulverize up some of this wood as well as eating a couple of little apples. And I wonder actually how strong this sword is. Uh, six, not quite as strong actually. Our, our per dot, per, per dot? There was a bunch of people in the comment section of the last episode who actually pointed out how to pronounce this, but there were like four different pronunciations, so I still have no idea. But uh, if we were to throw that in there, we get ourselves sawdust, and then the sawdust can be used with a bucket of water to make paper. You do get the bucket back, however, you do lose the water, so that's the thing that you have to bear in mind. We'll do that in a second, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab our terrain smasher after getting rid of all this stuff real quick. And I'm going to go get some more obsidian, and also, I think think there was something else I wanted to do and I can't quite remember what it was but I'm gonna get some obsidian guys and I'll be back in a second okay so a little while later I've gone ahead and got myself four obsidian so we should now be able to go ahead and do something like this get ourselves a book first of all like so and to make this we actually are gonna need two of these blank patterns really easy to make it's just some logs and some sticks go ahead and take a couple of those and make ourselves a book da -da, and then get ourselves an enchanting table Nice. And then if we were to go ahead and grab our division sigil again, like so, and right-click on this guy with it, shift right-click, that is, it will say alter activation ritual. Alter does not have a redstone circle. Alter cannot see the moon. Alter has sufficient natural earth. I'm not quite sure how it has sufficient natural earth. There's no natural earth around it. And finally, it said that the altar must not be uh, lit by any outside sources. And it says too early. Sacrifice must be made at midnight. So... What we have to do is we have to take this uh, this enchanting table outside, make sure that it has some redstone, a little redstone circle around it, make sure that it can see the moon, so it has to be able to what, see straight up into the sky, uh, have no roof above it, that means, ha have sufficient natural earth, so have at least some grass around it or something, uh, must be not built by outside sources, so we can't have any torches around it, and it must take place at midnight, which, for those who don't know, is when you look straight up and the moon is just directly above you uh, in Minecraft. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this quite far away because what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead. We're going to go all the way over here. And I think it also said, what did it say? It said, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, do, 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 did I just, oh, yeah, too early sacrifice. So you have to, yeah, 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 bleh, you have to have a sacrifice as well. So you have to have uh, some form of animal or mob uh, on top of the altar ready to kill as soon as midnight strikes. That will activate the ritual. And basically, what's going to happen when you activate the ritual is all of the grass around the enchantment table is going to turn into cursed earth. And as you saw when we read cursed earth, cursed earth spawns mobs instantly so as soon as we activate this thing the division sigil will become active which means we can actually do a bunch more stuff with the division sigil itself which is kind of cool including making some unstable ingots which we'll definitely do at some point in the future but it's also going to make a bunch of cursed earth now that cursed earth is going to instantly start spawning mobs so we have to be quick when we start to harvest it now the downside with cursed earth is much like grass you must have silk touch in order to mine it because if we were to go ahead and just dig, dig this up we don't get grass, we get dirt. And if we do that with Cursed Earth, the exact same thing happens. We don't get the Cursed Earth, we just get dirt, which is a massive pain in the backside. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get a shovel with Silk Touch. How are we going to do that? Well, it's easy. Because considering we only have three enchantment levels, we're clearly not going to use an enchanting table. Instead, we are going to use Tinker's Construct. So, in order to get started with some Tinker's Construct, we are going to need one of these, a stencil table. Really easy stuff if you happen to have some wooden planks on you, which we do. Look at that. Boom. We'll take some of those and we'll do something like this. Get ourselves a stencil table. We then need one of these, a part builder. And finally, I don't think we need quite all four of them. So finally, I think the last thing that we're going to need is, first of all, a couple more of these. I'm going to go ahead and make eight because we do need quite a lot of those. And the final thing we're going to need is one of these. You need to make a crafting table like so. Take that and then do something like this and get ourselves a tool station. Nice. There is one more you can make. It's this one here. It's the pattern chest. We don't really need it. I'm going to make it anyway because I like to have the full set of four. And I'm going to go ahead and set these up over in this room over here. Now, we want to make sure that we have the stencil table and the tool station kind of next to the pattern chest. Because I always forget which one it is, but one of these can access 
No, it's not. It's the part builder. No. <laughs> okay, you want to make sure you have the part builder next to the pattern chest because the part builder can access the pattern chest if it's put down next to it. Much like uh, the normal crafting station that we have uh, in our base back there can access any chest that's placed next to it. So if we do something like this and this, by the way, it doesn't matter which order you put these in. Just if you happen to put the part builder next to the pattern chest, you'll be able to access it, which is kind of nice. And what we're going to need to do now is make a shovel using Tinker's Construct. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the stencil table. We're going to grab ourselves a couple of those blank patterns that we just made an excess of. So we'll go ahead and take all six of those. I think we're only going to need three, but we'll take six just because why not? <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to put them in here. The first thing we're going to need is a tool binding. We're also going to need a tool rod. And we're also going to need a shovel head. This one here. All three of these will come together if we go to the tool station and click on shovel. You will see, actually, we don't even need the binding. I lied. We just need, if you're going to make a pickaxe, you need the binding. Uh, and if you're going to make some other stuff, you also need some kind of binding. But for the shovel, and I believe the hatchet, you don't actually need a binding. You just need the, um, the shovel head and the tool rod. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make the tool rod out of wood because we're super cheap. And the way we do that is at the part builder. We're going to throw that in there, put some wood there, and get ourselves a wooden tool rod. And this is why you can access the pattern chest, by the way, because you can go ahead and store your patterns in here once you're done. And I'm going to make the, uh, the shovel head out of obsidian. And the reason I'm going to use obsidian is because obsidian is pretty flippin' awesome, really strong, and really pretty cool. And actually, I'm thinking what I might do is make the rod out of paper. Because if you make the rod out of paper, you actually get some extra modifiers, uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. So let's see. Can we make the rod out of paper? I think we can. Let's see. If I was to put you there and do this. Oh, we can. Nice. Okay. Uh, it says writable. Writable basically means that it's going to give us an extra modifier when we make the tool over to the tool station. And in order to make the shovel, we need to go ahead and throw our paper tool rod uh, along with our shovel head. And we don't quite want to make a tool rod like that. We want to make a head. There we go. We'll take that. And we'll throw that in with you. Like so. There we go. And we got ourselves an obsidian shovel. Nice. And basically what we could do now is if we were to go ahead and open up the tool station, we can put the shovel in here and add one of those modifiers over here. You'll see it has four modifiers remaining. If I hadn't have used paper, that would have been only three modifiers. So it is a good idea to use for a couple more, uh, to use paper for something inside your tool. I usually use the binding, but considering there was no binding, I went ahead and uh, used it for the rod. And if we were to go ahead and look in this little book that we just got given, Materials and You Volume 2, which you accumulate once you start making some of this stuff, and we were to flick all the way onto the end, we will see some of the modifiers you can add to it. So, for instance, adding redstone gives you speed, so it makes your tool work faster. Uh, if we were to go ahead and flick on a little bit more, we would see what is known as a silky crystal, this guy over here, which basically gives your tool silk touch, which is exactly what we want to do. And if we were to go ahead and type in silky, like so, and have a look at the recipe. It requires four silky cloth, which is made from a bunch of string. Look at that, we need a lot of string. And a golden nugget, uh, or an aluminium brass nugget. We're going to use a golden nugget. And finally, an emerald, which is why we went ahead and made all that stuff. So, what I'm going to do now is, first of all, I'm going to eat some apples. We're going to grab a bunch of these uh, sawdust out here. Eat some of those. We're going to sleep again because it's very dark outside. And I'm going to spend about five minutes out by the water over there making some sawdust. Actually, let's... Oh, we can't sleep. There are too many mobs. No, we should move this. We should move our bed just like deeper in the base. So we don't have to worry about all the mobs that are just spawning outside. Also, we should probably just put some torches down outside so that we don't have to worry about all the mobs either. Let's go ahead and put it down like there. There we go. Whew. So... What I'm going to do, just to show you real quick, because there is a little, a little like, trick that uh, I've remembered, I guess I've remembered that uh, people told me about in the comment section that we tried to do earlier in the series, but kind of failed to doing. Let's not get hit by zombies. You guys, I'm just going to let you burn in the sun. I hope you don't mind. Thank you. You're the best. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the water, because this allows us to easily refill our bucket when we make a bunch of paper. And instead of bringing a crafting table with us, what we could do is we can look at the floor. We can press C. Hopefully there's no mobs around. I don't think there is. And we can put the uh, the sawdust in the places where we need to put sawdust. And then the bucket in the middle. And then press C to finish it off. And we get the paper. Look at that. It went ahead and made his paper. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this like a bazillion times until we have a butt ton of paper. And I'll be back in a second. And actually, I'll be back over at the village. And a little while later, here we are at our quote-unquote village. I say quote-unquote village because it's like the smallest village I've ever seen in my life. And if we were to head on in here and have a talk with this guy, he is willing to trade us 12 books 
for an emerald, which I will happily take him up on. Thank you very much. And he's still willing to do it, so we might be able to come back maybe between episodes and grab ourselves a couple more emeralds and try and get that chronotype up and running. But for now, actually, what I'll do real quick before we run away, because I know there's going to be a bunch of people having a go at me if I don't at least take a look, is have a look at what's under the cauldron here. And there is not a lot. Some witchery stuff, some more apples, which I guess is nice, but not really anything significant, or at least super significant. And for those who are wondering what... This guy is offering, he is offering, if we give him four emeralds, he will give us some spectral dust. What do we need for spectral dust? I have no idea what we need for spectral dust. It's part of witchery. That is one horrible eye you have there, sir. I'm deeply sorry for it, but I have to go. So I'm going to go ahead and make my way back to base, and I will see you in a second. Okay, night is dawning, so we do have to be pretty quick because we have to be ready to activate the ritual as soon as the moon is directly above us. So let's go ahead and start making ourselves this silky crystal. So all we need to do is go ahead and type in silky. And also, a quick tip, I did go ahead and grab some more wool from the sheep farm before I left for the village. And if you throw wool into a pulverizer, instead of throwing it into the macerator, you get four string per wool instead of uh, two string per wool, which is pretty nice. And you can also go ahead and turn any of your string back into wool by doing this, which is also why you get four in a pulverizer. We probably don't need all this string, so I'm going to take a little bit back, but uh, we'll take you. And now we should be able to do something like this. Let's grab some gold make oh we've already got enough golden nuggets to do this we can go ahead and surround those with string get ourselves one two three four of those get rid of all that and then go one two three four and an emerald and get ourselves a silky jewel nice we're also gonna need to go ourselves we don't need to but i'm gonna grab some redstone and i'm actually gonna grab quite a bit of redstone because i want this shovel to be fast if the shovel isn't fast we could get killed by mobs really really quick so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make these into blocks. You don't have to, but it's faster to add them on if they're in block form. So we'll go ahead and do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our tool station, this guy over here. And we're going to add a slicky crystal. Nice. Look at that. Done. And you'll see now we have three modifiers remaining. We're going to add some redstone. We can put them here and here. And it adds them twice as fast. So I'm just going to go ahead and do something like this. Boom. Boom. And you'll see this number here. Uh, I'll see if I can see this again. This number here is how much redstone you can have on per modifier. So 50 redstone equals one modifier. As soon as we go ahead and fill that up. So something like this. And then we need five more. So let's go ahead and try this. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, and five. Now it's at a full modifier. If we were to put any more redstone on, it would start to take up another modifier, which is not what we want to do. I kind of want to keep some modifiers spare. Plus, we don't have that much redstone left, so I'm going to go ahead and keep the rest of it that we have. And now what we need to do is we need to head on outside and get this ritual underway. So, hopefully it's not too late. I don't think it is. The moon is over there, so we still have time. We still have time to get this done. Let's head on over to our enchanting table. And again, the reason why I put it so far away is because there were going to be a ton of mobs spawning, and I would be able to run away and get in my house as fast as possible and sleep. Because as soon as the daylight comes, the cursed earth will burn. So we need to surround this with redstone. Do like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that. We need to have our shovel ready. I did go ahead and grab a pig inside this golden lasso, which is ready as a sacrifice in a second. You can also use like cows, sheep, chickens, and I think even uh, hostile mobs like zombies here. But I think other than that, everything is good to go. Let's grab our division sigil and let's shift right click just to see if it's ready. Too early. Sacrifice must be made at midnight. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to stand around here until the moon is directly above us. And we'll be back in a second. Okay, the moon is directly above us. The division sigil is shining. I think it is time to go. Throw the pig down, kill the pig, and get ready to go fast. There we go. There we go. Okay, get as much of it as we can. Get as much of it as we can, because we are going to get attacked real quick. And I'm out of here. Oh, no, I'm not. There's not any mobs yet. Whew. Okay, you want to get as much of it as you can. It doesn't really matter how much you get, because it does spread. So, really, you only need one piece. But, oh, watch out for the creepers. You see, the mobs that spawn on this also are a lot faster and stronger than normal mobs. That creeper, oh, is going to kill us pretty flippin' fast. And we, I think, have more than enough at Cursed Earth. So we're going to leave. Uh, like I said, all we have to do really is put it in a dark room with some more dirt. And it will spread and give us more Cursed Earth. And if we want, we can go ahead and pick that up with our shovel as well. You can see the paper did kind of take its toll on the shovel's durability. Our shovel has not a lot of durability left, which is not good at all. However, we can add modifiers to make it go a little bit faster. However, we did get 23 Cursed Earth, which is pretty nice. And as I said, we can get more of that. Let's go ahead and sleep. And that should go ahead 
and burn all of the mobs outside. And I think with that, guys, I'm going to end the episode there because we don't really have much time to uh, set up the, mo the mob spawn in this episode. But we'll definitely come back and do that next episode. I real quick want to show you what happens when you leave Cursed Earth in the sunlight. That is what happens. It all burns. We will go back and get that enchantment table at some point. But for now, what I'm going to do is episode 10, which for those who don't know, means it is a world download episode. So I'm going to go ahead and just put all of my stuff into the uh, AE system, by the way, uh, space bar and left click to jump all of your stuff in like that. And apparently there's no space for this axe, so the axe is going to go in this chest. There will be a world download link in the description. You can go ahead and just grab that, throw it into your world save folder and play along with me from this point here, if you so wish. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please like, leave a comment down below, and I will see you next time. So I've had a couple of people ask me how to actually install these world downloads that I provide every 10 episodes. So I thought I would do a quick tutorial on how to actually install them. Here we have a mega download. There will be a link to this download and also a media fire download in the description in case one of the two doesn't work for you. All you have to do is click download. It should download fairly quickly. It's not a massive world file, although it is slightly on the bigger side for an episode 10 because we have done quite a bit of exploring during this episode. So it could take a while. Do bear with it. I'm going to go ahead and just move this to the side for the time being. And then you want to open up your Feed the Beast launcher. Make sure you're selected Infinity. Click Edit Mod Pack. Then click Open Folder. This is going to take you, and mine's just opened another monitor here. This is going to take you to your Feed the Beast Infinity directory. And then you want to click on Minecraft. Click on Saves. And then once this here has finished downloading, you want to drag and drop the file into your saves folder. So uh, I am going to go ahead and wait for this thing to finish. And then once it's done, if you're in Chrome, it will appear down here on the bottom left. If you're in Firefox, it should appear up here in the top right. All you want to do is just drag and drop that into your saves folder, like so. Then simply right click on it, click Extract All. This will bring up this box here. Simply make sure it's in the same place like this. You want it on uh, where your Feed the Beast Infinity folder is. Yours probably won't be called Feed the Beast Current here, but it will be called FTB Infinity Minecraft and Saves. So make sure that's in the exact right place you want it. And then click Extract. And once it's done, you will have yourself a little folder like this called Gaming on Caffeine World Save Episode 10 or whatever it says for my current world download. And then you're done. All you got to do is boot up FTB Infinity and you should have a world save that says something like this. And if you go ahead and open it up, you can see it's all done. So that is how you install all of my world saves for all of my downloads. I hope this helped and I will see you guys next time.